In today's video I want to have a chat with you guys about capital gains tax. Good day, my name is Hanu Gubia. I'm an accountant. I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and obviously over the years we've uh, we had to deal with many many situations or calculations of capital gains tax. So I think today's video, just a disclaimer, is not going to be a very technical video but I want to explain to you guys the basic concepts about capital gains tax so that at least you guys are informed about how it works, just the basics itself. Um, now I'm going to share the link just now, but if you go look on the receipt of revenue, there's a guide to capital gains tax and that guide is a thousand pages long. I think it's 970 something pages long. So there's no ways that I can cover, cover a thousand page manual with you guys in 10 minutes time. So that's why once again, I'm just doing a broad overview just to give you guys some pointers of how capital gains tax works. So let me jump down to my computer, then I can show you what I've prepared for you. Remember once again, just to give the video a like as well, subscribe to my channel. I'll really appreciate it. Cool. Yeah, so today's talk, what are we going to talk about is capital gains tax. So I think the first thing, a lot of people get confused when they get to capital gains tax. People think that capital gains tax is a separate tax, but that's incorrect. Capital, the capital gains tax, and the only thing that it does, it, 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 you need to determine of how much of the profit that you guys made on the sale of an asset, how much of that profit that you make is going to be included in your normal taxable income. So that's why I said over there, the first point, not, it's not a different type of tax, but it's just how much of the profit of a sale of an asset will become taxable. There's certain exclusions which we can have, which applies, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. And then capital gains tax is actually not something that's been around forever. It's only something that started in 2001. So previously before that, if you bought the asset for a million rand, you sold it for 10 million rand, there was no tax payable on those amounts. But since 2001, obviously the receiver of revenue is trying to broaden their tax base, and that's a reason why um, you, at the moment you need to pay tax if you make capital gains. And I think the main argument between capital gains tax and where a lot of people battle with is to, to distinguish when something is capital in nature and when something is in revenue in nature. And I think that guide that I talk about, the thousand page guide, they go quite in, into depth into that thing of when something is capital in nature because remember capital, you do pay a little bit, a little bit, a little bit lower tax than if it's revenue in nature. And I think the next important thing to make a note of is the intention when acquiring an asset. So that is also really, really important because if your intention is, like I said, to buy and sell it, then it means that it will be normal revenue. So you can't use any lower tax rates because that's obviously the intention wasn't there. Where if you buy a property, uh, property is obviously which I'm using now, but it can be anything else, whether it's gold coins or shares or anything like that. If you buy it for an investment that you're going to keep for a very long time for capital appreciation, then it means that you're going to be able to use the lower tax rates, which is the capital gains tax rates. Um, the next thing I said over there, the period of time out and intervening factors is also really important. So once again, if you buy a property, if you I'm using a property once again as an example. If you buy it now and sell it six months later, you're going to battle to, to argue with the receiver of revenue and say, no, but it was capital in nature. And that's the reason why the intervening factors is also really important. If you do need to sell it, um, let's say, for instance, investment property, if you can argue it hard enough that the intention when you bought it was for capital, then it means that they have to apply capital gains tax rates. <clears throat> I think, once again, I just want to mention the guide on the receiver of revenue's website. And I think maybe I'll put the link to that guide as well at the bottom of the video so you guys can go check out that guide. Um, I think the next thing that's really important is events that triggers disposal. So there's a couple of things that trigger disposals. The first thing is donations. Second one is exchange. If you exchange shares for, for property or something like that. <clears throat> Losses, if something gets stolen or anything like that or something gets destroyed, then obviously that's a, also a disposal according to them. Vesting of shares, so I think that's really important. Death is one another thing that triggers um, a disposal of assets and also immigration. So the day that you decide that you want to leave South Africa, on that day they deem that you've sold your worldwide assets. You have to do valuation of those assets and look at your base cost of what you bought it for. We're going to talk about it now, but then obviously those the, the capital gain that you make is going to become taxable again. So I said up here the basic principle. As the selling price minus your base cost equals a capital gain or a capital loss. So with capital gains tax, you can actually make losses as well. And what's nice about capital losses is that that loss can then carry over to the next year. So which means that you first have to use up that loss before you start having to 
before you need to start paying capital gains tax. So that's important to know as well. So just another thing as well as the base cost is the purchase price plus any qualifying expenses. And I think something that I just want to mention over here is, um, is that um, on the qualifying expenses, a lot of guys has got rental properties. So if um, the receiver of revenue has got two different types of um, uh, classification of expenses. So they say that let's say for instance you've got a rental property and you've got a six foot wall outside and something happens to the wall and they rebuild the wall and that and one that you rebuilt is also six foot. They just say that that is a repair but if you take the wall down and you build an eight foot wall that they said that is an improvement. So on your normal tax return if you build an eight foot wall you can't take that expense off as a, as a repairs and maintenance cost. You need to put that cost one side and the day when you sell the property that improvement that he made on the property that cost is going to be added to the base cost of the original purchase price so it's going to reduce a taxable capital gain one day when you do sell the property so just go check out their definition so they've got a big difference they call it wear and tear capital improvement so if there's a floor covering there's a means you could carpets in the house and you take it out and you put tiles they say that you're you know, replacing a floor covering with another floor covering but as soon as you add anything onto your investment property, they say that's an improvement and those things you have to keep it separate for one day when you sell the property. So I think that's just really important. I wanted to mention that. And once again, losses, I did mention it just now, but losses get carried forward to the next year. And the inclusion rates. So what that means is for individuals and for companies, so if you make, we're going to talk about it now, just now, it means as you make a million rand, profit then you're only going to include 40% of the million rand is going to be added to your taxable income and that is what you're going to pay tax on for companies that inclusion rate is 80% so that's really important to know the effective rates because remember that if we say that we only include 40% and you're paying tax of 45% then it means that your maximum tax that you're going to be paying is 18% for companies remember company tax rate normal company tax rate is normally 28% if you take 80% and then it means that your maximum tax for capital for companies is 22.4%. So your capital gains tax for companies, the effective rate is much higher than for individuals. So I think that's one of the cons or that you've got to be careful for when you're looking at investment properties and stuff, not to buy it in the company's name, especially if you've got low taxable income because you can end up paying a lot more tax one day. <clears throat> and then I'll set up the examples to follow. So let's quickly see. And there's a couple of exclusions, so certain things, if you sell it, that won't be taxed and capital gains tax. Um, and then the first exclusion is that every individual gets a 40,000 rand basic exclusion. So I think that's important to note. So if you make a profit of 100,000 rand, everybody, doesn't matter who you are, gets a 40,000 rand exclusion. So only 60,000 rand is the part that they're going to look at and 40% of the 60,000 is going to be included in your income. So what's important as well there is that just to remember that um, that, um, that the 40,000 rand exclusion is only for individuals. It doesn't count for companies. Companies can't get the ex exclusion. It's only for individuals. Uh, the next thing is 300,000 rand in the year of death. So when you die, you get a 300,000 rand exclusion. Uh, 2 million rand gain or loss in the disposal of, of a primary re residence. If you buy your house for 2 million rand, you sell it for 5 million rand, then it means that one day when you sell the property, you're only going to be taxed on a million rand because 2 million rand is the exclusion that you get. Most personal use assets, it's also important to know that if you buy, as if as you buy or sell your 10 year old car that you had for a long time and you maybe make a little bit of a profit or a loss over there, that is excluded for capital gains tax purposes. Um, retirement benefits as well. So if you're going to pension one day, the growth that you had in your pension funds and stuff. And I think that's also the next one that says payments in respect of regional long-term insurance policies. So those type of things are exempt and then small business exclusion of capital gains for individuals. So if you are older than 55 years old and there's certain exclusions that apply, if you sell those properties, then you don't need to pay capital gains. Oh, not the properties. If you sell your business, then there's a certain portion that's excluded as well over there. I think assets on which capital gains tax are payable. The first thing that I want to mention is land and buildings. That is obvious. So any property that you buy, they when you sell it, remember all those type of things get registered with the receiver of revenue. So if you sell a building, but you don't declare it on the tax return, they're going to pick it up. So you must make double share over there. And the next one is shares. So every time when you buy or sell shares, there's a possibility that you need to 
you're going to have to pay tax on it. So the question is just whether the sale of those shares are revenue nature or whether it's capital in nature. If it's capital in nature, remember, then you're going to be using capital gains tax. If it's revenue nature, then you're going to have to pay normal income tax on the profits that you make. <clears throat> Certain personal use assets, so they've got a long list over there. They say planes that weigh more than 450 kilograms, you must pay tax on that. Boats longer than 10, 10 meters, certain jewelry, certain coins, certain artworks. So they've got a long list in that guide, the thousand page guide that I was talking about, that you might need to have to pay capital gains tax on. Contract, contractual rights, goodwill, trademarks, loans. So there's a long list of things that you need to be aware of that um, where capital gains tax is relevant. Let's quickly have a look at an example. So you can see in my example of here, I just did a basic example to say that you sold something for 1.5 million rand, you had a base cost of a million rand, and then you had a profit on the sale of 500,000 rand. <clears throat> What's important then, you can see there's that annual exclusion that we were talking about. So it doesn't matter who you are, you get a 40,000 rand annual exclusion that you get. So it means that there's 460,000 rand. Of the 460,000 rand, there's only 40,000 rand of that will be included in the income. So you can see over the asset to be included in taxable income, 184,000 rand. So I just um, used a couple of different scenarios, so taxable income before capital gains tax. So if you haven't got any income and you sell something where you make a 500,000 rand profit, if you've got income of 350,000 rand, what the case might be, a million rand and then two million rand. So because I wanted to get to this high tax bracket. So normal tax payable, if you haven't got income, then obviously zero tax payable. If you earn 350,000 rand, remember they've got those sliding scales. So the more income you earn, the higher tax rate you afford in, the more tax you're going to be paying one day now. Then it means that if it's 350,000, your annual tax for the year is 56,000 rand. If you make a million rand taxable income, it's 300,000 rand, 2 million rand is 718,000 rand. Now we need to go and add the taxable portion of the gain. So we add 184,000. So now your taxable income becomes 184. On that, you can see the tax is 17,000 rand. So it means that you're only going to be paying 3%. So if you take 16,000 rand, divided by the 500,000 rand profit that you make, it means your effective rate is only 3%. If your annual income is 350,000 rand, we add the taxable capital gain portion over there. So it means that you're going to be have to, have to pay tax on 534,000. Your new tax that you're going to have to pay is 115,000. So the tax on the gain is 60,000 rand plus minus. So if you take the 60,000 rand divided by the 500,000 rand profit, it means that you've got a tax, effective tax rate of 12% that you're paying. You can see if it's a million rand, now your taxable income becomes almost 1.2 million rand. The new tax that you're going to have to pay is 273,000 rand, so the difference is 75,000 rand. Then you can see your effective tax rate is, is 15%. Remember there, you're not inside the top, top tax bracket yet, so they now won't apply the 45%. If your taxable income is 2 million rand, so that's when you start getting to that 45% tax bracket. It means that annual tax that you have to pay, a 718,000 rand taxable portion again is 184, so you're going to have to pay, be paying tax on 2,184,000 rand. So the tax payable, including the gain, the big move jumps up to 80, 801,000. So the tax payable on the gain is 82,000 rand. And you can see there it says 17% is the effective rate. Remember just now I said that the effective rate for individuals is 18%. And the reason why there's a difference over there is because of that annual exclusion. So if you had to take 500,000 500, rand, multiply that with 45%, or multiply it with 40%, multiply it with 45%, then you will see that the effective tax rate will be 18%. For companies, let's quickly have a look at companies. The same example over there. If you sell something for 1.5 million rand, base cost of a million rand, you can see profit on sale of 500,000 rand. You can see now that any exclusion falls away because that exclusion is not available for companies. So a total... Um, uh, profit is 500,000 rand, so the inclusion rate is 80%, 80 so it means that you're going to have to be paying tax on 400,000 rand. So <clears throat> if your taxable income is zero, now you're going to have to add the taxable portion of the gain, 400,000 rand, it means that you can see that you're going to be paying 112,000 rand capital gains tax. Where, if we just go back to the previous slide, so if you had that same asset in the, in the, the name of, the, of an individual, you would only be paying 16,000 rand. So you can see there's quite a big jump. It's almost 100,000 rand difference in the tax that you have to pay. 
If you look at them, if you do have a taxable income of 100,000 Rand, it means your tax is going to be 28,000 Rand. If you add the taxable capital gain, your new taxable income is 500,000 Rand. So you can see the tax still stays 112,000 Rand. So you can see that effective rate still stays 22.4% because you haven't got that benefit of that sliding scale as for individuals. <clears throat> if you look at small business corporation tax rates, I've done a separate video on small business corporation tax rates as well. First, I think about 90,000 rand, you don't pay any tax, then it jumps up, and then only from 550,000 rand, you start paying 28%. So then those rates in that side, that bracket moves to 0%, and then 5.6, then 6.8, and then 2020, uh, 20, 22.4. That 6.8 might be incorrect. You just have to double check that one. Um, yeah, so just remember once again, if you find some value inside this video, once again, I just want to mention it's not meant to be a very technical video, it's just to give you guys the basic understanding of how capital gains tax works. Once again, like I said, just give the video a like, remember to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.